YouTube. We're back with tutorial number two on our Pong clone game in XNA. Uh, first I want to start out, I know we're going to load some sprites for this and uh, we're going to do that. Um, we're going to create our paddle class today too. Uh, but first what I want to do is when you when you run this now, you get this default window, right? And it's this default size. Uh, first let's put some stuff in to, so you can set the size of your of your screen and if you want it full screen or not uh, I find it's easier not to put it in full screen uh, when you're debugging and stuff because it's just you know it's full screen and it's easier to look at something smaller it loads quicker and alright we'll start from there uh, first what we want to do is here in our constructor under graphics device here we want to add a few more lines of code to set this up. Uh, first of all it'll be graphics dot is full screen. It's going to be equal to false because we, do, we don't need a full screen. Not right now anyways, maybe when we're done. Uh, next one will be graphics dot preferred back buffer height. This will be how uh, tall your window is. I'm going to make that 768. You can make it whatever you want. I just find uh, after playing prior to this, I was playing around and I found it was a good size for a Palm clone. And then, of course, the width of the screen. Graphics dot preferred back buffer width equals 1024. So with that, we can build and run. And now we have a much larger window for our game. Alright, so let's start by creating our paddle class. Uh, I'm going to have uh, a zip file, in the a link to the zip file in this description. It has a couple of paddles I created, a ball, a like a blip sound effect for when the ball is bouncing off the walls of the paddles, and uh, some borders for the top and bottom of your screen uh, that you guys can download. Um, first, let's create a new class. Right click, project add a class and we're just going to name this paddle class it's just paddle.cs and in here first we're going to want to drive from actually first go back to your game one and we're going to copy these using statements we normally you wouldn't have to copy all of them but it's a small game and for the sake of the time of the tutorial you'll just copy them all over to your paddle class your paddle.cs. I'm going to grab this from Microsoft.xna.framework.game. Okay. So, what does a paddle need? Well, uh, first it's going to need a texture. So it's a public. Texture 2D. And you have to bear with my typing today, it's a little late. We're just going to name that texture. We need a position for it. So public and that's a vector 2 called position. And we're going to give it a P number, which this is for a player number. Since we're going to have two paddles, we need two players. And uh, X and A has a way of creating player indexes for one through four players. So uh, it'll be a public player index. We'll just call it P number, player number. And then we need a couple of variables here. It'll be the width of our paddle, the height of our paddle, and the speed at which the paddle can move up and down. So from there, we can go to our constructor. And that needs to be up there. Okay, and basically this is where we're going to set set our defaults for for our our variables up here. Uh, we're going to set texture to we'll just make it null. Um, let's see. We'll set our position to a vector two. Zero, which is my default. Um, the player index, you can set the P number, 
equal player index one. So when we instantiate a player, it's by default player one. So when we instantiate player two, we'll just have to make that player index two. And then of course, uh, the rest would be our width, which I believe is, I made it 35 pixels, the paddle will be 35 pixels wide. The height of it is 200 pixels. And speed we will set to default of 20. After playing with it, that seemed like a good speed. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then a few more functions. We will need a void update function. And and I do have a, I'm coming down with a cold, so you're gonna have to bear with me tonight. I wanted to get these tutorials out because I know I've been slacking. Draw. And what we're gonna put in our draw function is uh, the way it works is uh, let's see, we'll take a sprite batch. And then it'll be sprite batch dot draw and it will just be it's gonna it takes three arguments it's gonna be the texture we assigned uh, it wants a destination which will be our position and then color default to white dot white Sorry about that okay and we won't do anything with the update now because we're just gonna we want to get these drawn to the screen. Uh, so that's about it for now for this for this video on uh, setting up our paddle class. So you got your texture 2D for your paddle named texture. You got your position for your paddle, which is a vector two. You got your player index p number. Um, your width, height, and speed of your paddles. And then we're just basically setting these to null or nothing or default values that we know are never going to change. Like the width and the height of the paddles are always going to stay 35 by 200. Um, we can do something about the speed. If you think the paddles move too fast, just reduce this. Or if you want to move faster up and down, you can increase that. And then basically what this is saying is that um, when we draw when we draw the paddle, we want it to draw to the screen the texture that we assign at the position that we assign and the color white because they are PGs, so it's just going to come up... Um, with whatever your image is. And so, save that off. I'll build it just to make sure we don't have any errors here. We're okay. And then we'll go back to the game 1CS. And down to our load content. 